Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel of Five Token Reviews, hosted by your studio of Five Coming straight from the living room to you on the internet. Now, before we go any further, guys, make sure you like, you comment. Your boy is trying to get to 1k subscribers, and I need your help. So please subscribe if you haven't, and also share my video so others can subscribe as well. I would really appreciate that. So, so guys, let's talk about Tressy. It's a Filipino anime, and it's on Netflix. And I was a bit curious and also cautious because. One, I'm, I was curious because it's Filipino and I've never seen a Filipino anime before but I was cautious because it is Netflix anime and you know that they like to butcher anime but one thing I'll say is that usually when they say Netflix anime series they don't usually mean like it's from Japan it just usually means like it's an animated series like I guess maybe some people were from Japan that worked on it but it is what it is so i like the concept you know it's uh about creatures of the night you know different types of mythology all of them have to do with like evil creatures to some level you know you know flesh eating creatures you know monsters of some nature and that just reminds me of castlevania and i loved it for that um the storyline was okay wouldn't say that i was blown away by it or anything of the sort and so the synopsis reads, in Manila, where dark supernatural forces pervade the criminal underworld, it's up to Alexandra Tresse to keep the peace, but there's a storm brewing. And it's only six episodes, so it's quite easy to get into, but I felt like it was just too short for me, because I feel like a lot has to happen for it to make sense, but at the same time, so little happened in my opinion, like, this is not a standalone thing, like, there has to be... A season two and probably even a season three because this just kind of established who she is what they did is that they used flashback a lot to establish her character like she's in present day you know she's a detective she works with the police on like supernatural cases like you have so many monsters from filipino mythology or filipino legend all this kind of stuff like i'm not used to them but you know i don't mind you know they're only like the monsters they are only like their native language you know you had the aswang you had the tikbalang some names that i was not familiar with at all so it took some getting used to and they never like had any like info where they explained what this is like if you watch normal anime like for example gintama is a very good example anything that is foreign to you like any reference they make they will explain to you at the top but you never did that here so if you don't know these monsters or you can if you can enjoy it without knowing what they are like on an in-depth level then it's your loss because they're not going to explain to you at any point you just see the monster and say okay just assume okay maybe you can relate to like okay they are swans they are kind of like vampires so like you know what okay i guess this is their own version of vampires and that's all you're going to get there's no explanation per se and like i said they use a lot of flashback in the sh uh, anime to establish a character and the character of like her two assistants basilio and crispin like they are basically like her brothers of some level and you get to see how they even came into contact because the story also relies on her father like she's kind of living her father's legacy she's a tressy and her father was also tressy so what they do in their family is to hunt down these demons you know to keep order in the supernatural world and stuff so they make reference a lot to her father and I found that a bit annoying and she never even complains to be honest I guess there's not a lot to complain about in 6 episodes and I guess it's based on how the writers want her to be I feel like yes it was her story but it relied too much on her father as well so maybe the next season will establish more of her own personality because she's not a very likable person like she doesn't have that main protagonist aura or that main protagonist um, charisma that we usually would like from you can see someone like Cypher from Castlevania she had that main protagonist aura to her she was a very enjoyable character but this one she had a lot of pain to deal with she, was, she didn't really joke a lot she didn't really smile and I guess it's nothing really to smile about when you're dealing with flesh eating monsters on a regular basis there's a lot of murder, a lot of blood, a lot of gore and I do like that I'm not really a fan of horror, but I do like some horror animation. Like it just gets to me. Like that's my feel. Like I wouldn't watch a horror movie per se, but I'll definitely watch anime where they are tearing people apart. 
like Attack on Titan is a very good example. Invincible is not anime, but it is a cartoon, it is animation, and they tear people apart as well. Cuts you of Omni Man for the most part. So, this one, it's just going to take some getting used to. The animation is excellent, but I feel like nothing action y or nothing crazy happened. Like, I used to show them, like, there's a lot of crazy action scenes and stuff. So, this one. Um, if you watch a lot of shonen, this one takes a little bit of getting used to. There's nothing particularly exciting about the animation. It's just like standard. They move from they move from point A to point B, and even when they put in effort, like the characters are not doing anything out of the ordinary, for the most part. So it was a cool anime. And there was one scene, right? Like I was talking about, and there was one scene where, right, because I was referring to her two assistants, there was one scene where you would see how like she was introduced to the assistant like their mother was killing people trying to bring back their father their father is from another world it's called the talagusao that that two talagusao is like the god of war and she had to sacrifice a lot of people to bring him back and when she brought him back she killed her that was reminded me from DC Titans when um, Rachel's mom tried to bring Trigon, her father, back to life and then Trigon ended up killing her. So I was like, bro, you spend all this time trying to bring somebody back and you're the first person that they kill. I mean, you're trying to bring a destroyer of the world and stuff. So you get what you get. You saw the story progress. They have some sort of accord with all the different factions of the underworld, the human faction and the monster faction, the different types of monsters. You know, just to keep things at peace, but you know, Manila is still going down the drain. Things are getting worse. Like, for example, the mayor is a crook, is corrupt. He got caught and he got sent to prison. And actually, when he went to prison, that's when things even got worse for the city. And they even had like a zombie invasion at some point. So, you have all your classic stuff that makes it a good horror show, like all your classic monsters. And then you get introduced to yeah mythology filipino mythology and i didn't even know anything about philippines i didn't even know they were colonized by spain and then the united states so they have like strong spanish culture to some point so like their names for example so that was a that was fascinating to me because i was never exposed to that sort of culture that's what's good about these kind of shows because of representation you know they make the world a bit more familiar to more people they expose you to more things than you wouldn't have known before so when we got to the final episode the sixth episode we had like an end of the world villain but it wasn't believable because the stakes were not high and the scale of it wasn't high like okay you have an end of the world villain in your city and you only show him in the city you don't even show him in his past when he tried to end the world before like there wasn't even enough build up to him like as a villain like you know like oh this guy should be very scared of him he can bring the end of the world even though yes we had seen him in the previous episodes when he first came back but her father trapped him so that was it so to have no build up at all it just comes from nowhere it was i feel like it was a bit too cheap she dealt with him right then and there so <sighs> I'm like, okay, this guy's supposed to end the world, but there is no end of the world stakes. Like, you know, when you watch American movies, something is about to end the world. You see the scale of it. Like, at least we see a whole city. You see people being scared. Imagine that the Avengers fought Thanos and like in front of the prison. You know, like it never went beyond that point. Would you have believed that Thanos could end the world no it's not believable because the scale was too small so i felt like if the scaling was much bigger that this is a threat this guy is a god he can literally end the world yes people were killed and stuff but it just didn't feel believable because it was only six episodes and they couldn't establish the scale of it all and that was my biggest issue with it so overall it was a nice show you should check it out i know i've spoiled it a bit for you but it's still watchable like i said it's only six episodes so it's a very short commitment it's about 25 minutes for each episode the final episode has about 30 something minutes and then there was a post credit scene i wouldn't spoil that one for you so yeah check it out there has to be a season two probably next year or maybe at some point this year because six episodes is just too short 
So how many tokens will Tresse get? Drum roll, brrr, I'll give Tresse 7 tokens out of 10. Yeah, it could have been better. It was okay. Being introduced to Filipino mythology and stuff, I was quite curious. But there needs to be a lot more done. Like six episodes are just not gonna cut it for me. We need about 10 episodes or even 12. You know, I guess this was kind of like experimental, you know, budget-wise. They just wanted to put it out there and see if people will receive it properly or not. And then maybe season two they can upscale it and be a bit more daring we'll see or they can cancel it it is netflix after all so yeah guys i'm gonna go now before i go make sure you like you let me know how i feel about tressy if you've seen it or if you've not seen it are you gonna watch it after watching this comment down below also leave me some more netflix recommendations the boy trying to get to 1k subscribers and i need you also please subscribe if you haven't and also share my video so others can subscribe as well i would really appreciate that the links to my social media will be in the description below so make sure you follow me on social media guys i would really appreciate that okay guys i'm gonna go now for real if you wanna stick around you can watch my previous videos peace